flag in this novice club Ford feature event. And boy, when the flag drops, everything goes three and four wide down the front straightaway and into turn one. Scirocco looked like he brought the field down rather slowly, and Hatala from the outside of the front row took the lead. I think Frank Parchek uh, is in third, but he's getting strong challenge now from Rick Brunner and uh, George Grenier. On the outside, there is Brunner, the blue and silver number 45 car, and he takes the high groove away from Frank Parchek. A look at the race leader down the front straightaway, and that is Victor Hatala, driving 57 out of New York City. Let's the car sweep up into the banking of Thompson Speedway. And now, moving up the outside, yet another challenge. That's Grenier coming up on uh, Brunner, and those two drivers are battling for fourth place behind George Allshafer in third. Allshafer third, Grenier trying to move up. There is Hatala and Scirocco back down the front straightaway once again. We can see the cars beginning to take different lines around here. For many drivers, this is their first time on an oval track, as Frank Parchek explains. I think it's uh, real exciting. It's a lot different than a road course, you know, with the bank turns. It's, it's a real exciting, a little scary and exciting, a lot of fun. Action back up toward the front of the field. One driver relentless trying to move on the outside. That's Grenier. He favors the high line outside as Brunner. Ooh, bobbles a little, and I think Grenier's has enough to get underneath. Yes, it looks like Grenier now is going to take over fourth place. Back with the leader, Victor Hatala, down the back straightaway, has, what is it, uh-oh, trouble in turn two. Looks like the field uh, got caught up there with fourth, fifth, and sixth place cars. Uh, George Grenier looked like he was involved. He looked like he could have been involved, and uh, so was Frank Parchek. There's Parchek in the wall. So Parchek, you can see the black scrape marks from the tires as the hand in the air from Hatala signifies that he has seen and taken the caution flag. And Parchek, out of his car, We'll get to sit out the rest of this one as the rescue crew goes to his aid. You know that assert safety crew that works these races, they're very efficient and as you can see they got there very quickly. Uh, for many people who like to become involved with racing and, and really can't justify the cost at this point, uh, they often join the safety crew and find a way to go to the races and have the best seat in the house. Caution flag is out here at Thompson Speedway in Connecticut. Hatala is the leader, Sirocco riding second, and George Olshafer is third. But for several of these drivers, their day's over. That's Grenier walking and looking down at the ground. He uh, looks like he's shaking his wrist. He could have hurt his wrist a little there, but uh, his day is over after a really good start at the beginning of the race. So the safety car has the rest of what was a 21-car field in tow. Steering is very precise on these Formula Fords. They are extremely sensitive, as we saw. Uh, they're also sensitive to the wall, as we see here. This is true. They're also very fragile. Uh, you can't hit the wall here and expect to be able to continue. But they are inexpensive cars to campaign. And now the driver's weaving back and forth, uh, partly to keep some heat in those tires so they stay up to racing temperature. And also, you get a little bit of dust and uh, rubber debris and so forth on the racetrack, and that weaving back and forth helps work some of that off the tread surface so that when they go back under the green flag, they're right and quickly up to race temperature and race speed. Hatala on the left side of your screen, number 57, out of New York City, a Winkleman chassis. He's a financial advisor. He has the lead in Nick Sirocco, the pole sitter, racing out of Englewood Cliffs, New Jersey. A foreman driving a Crosley is second. We're set for green flag racing to resume. And out of turn four, they get the green once again. Single file restart, but Sirocco goes to work right away. Hatala got a good jump at this start, and even though Sirocco went down low, Hatala is able to maintain the point. So Hatala is the leader, Scirocco is second, George Allshafer, and we asked fourth place Rich Brunner if he finds oval racing intimidating. All you see is wall out here, so it's it makes you think a little bit more when you see all the tire marks on these walls. That's the one thing I don't like about it. Yes, the cars are fairly fragile, the concrete is unforgiving, but the steep bank here at Thompson Speedway can allow a driver to get in a little out of shape and still scrub off a lot of speed before he meets with that concrete wall. Here's a look at the two leaders and Scirocco closing uh, very dramatically there as they got into turn number three and we saw Rudy Orkish go by. Now, Scirocco has wrapped it down to about two car lengths. That's right, and here's a spin by George Allshafer. He was running third. I don't know if he's gonna be able to hold that position. And the second place car goes around. That's Scirocco. Yellow flags waving there at turn number two. 
He had all but caught Hatala, the race leader, but quickly he's back in gear and going again. In Connecticut, Victor Hatala out of New York City driving this Winkleman Formula Ford has the lead. Good battle behind him. That's a battle for third now. We have Robert Zanto, Rick Brunner, and George Olshafer who spun, and right behind them is Paul Dos Santos in that periscope car. Slower car blocking the pursuit of Brunner on the outside. He's worked well on the high side of this racetrack, but now he finds himself tail end of that three-car battle. Second place, Nick Scirocco explains what is more important, the driver or the car. Well, the most important thing here is the uh, setup rather than the, uh, the driving. I feel as though whoever gets the right setup is going to be the winner. There's the race leader, Victor Hatala, out of New York City. Uh, that roll bar also encompasses an air scoop, and one driver comes to grief in the pit lane. That's Ozzie Sutcliffe. He's been smoking for a few laps, and I think he's got some sort of a fluid problem. Victor Hatala, driving 57, has led since the drop of the green flag from pole sitter Nick Sirocco, Paul Loricella in third, George Olshafer fourth, and Rick Brunner, the fifth place car. You know, it's interesting about that third place car, Paul Loricella. Just six weeks ago, he totaled that car in a crash at Pocono. Here's fourth place, uh, George Allshafer. So Allshafer showing a little bit of uh, wing, a little more advanced design on the back end of his Formula Four. Note the side-mounted radiators in that number 20 car compared with the front-mounted radiator in that of the leader. Different thinking from different chassis builders and cars that may have been built two or three years apart. We have an interesting battle here. Laura Sell is that white car. Robert Zanto is the red car right behind him. And just behind there is uh, Laura Sella. And he goes down underneath the lapped car of uh, Steve Ferner. Laura Sella slips a bit high and that allows is that Ferner getting in uh, there just a bit. But Laura Sella will hold on to the spot. Loricella out of Wilton, Connecticut in a Royale chassis machine. And, and there goes Robert Zanto down beneath him. So Zanto gets underneath and passed. Now Allshafer has dropped the spot in the process in the 20 car. But the three of them are running right in close quarters there. And there goes Allshafer underneath Loricella and he takes the position. That was the battle for third. Let's move back to the race for sixth place. That's right. That's Richard Brunner. He just lapped Kieran Curley, and uh, Brunner is staying with the leaders, but not as close as he was at the beginning of the race. That high groove does not seem to have worked too well for him. Here's the race leader once again, Hatala. He has led all the way thus far, and he's working a middle to low groove at the Thompson Speedway. Well, he's free of traffic, so he can pretty much pick where he wants to be. Once he gets into traffic, he's going to have to uh, take what uh, space is available to him on the track. On the right of your screen, Robert Zanto moving up, and inside in the back straightaway, making a pass, is that Greg Desarian, one of the lap cars. That's right. And the race leader coming up on them. That's right. The race leader seems to be handling extremely well, and he's lapped now everyone except the top seven or eight cars. That's 57 Hatala moving in on Gisarian's already lapped machine. Greg gives him plenty of room, passing to the low side down in the groove here at the Thompson Speedway. Gets a little bit loose coming off the corner at that time. Well, we heard uh, earlier that Nick Scirocco say handling was very important here, and it seems that the drivers, many of whom are here for the very first time, are still learning about how to try and set the car to handle just right on an oval track. Here's Dos Santos once again. Uh, his machine is a Lola uh, with that distinctive wedge-shaped design with a little spoiler at the tail end. Not that that works any better than the more rounded-looking machines as Vitala comes up around the outside to put him a lap down. The drivers are constantly negotiating with traffic on this track, which is a new experience for them. Fourth place, George Olshafer explained. Uh, it's a lot more concentration on the road, and you gotta watch out for the traffic when you start lapping the field. It gets pretty hazardous out there. At 20, Olshafer is the youngest driver in this field. You're watching Hatala, 57, work his way through race traffic and he is really cutting through. That's right, he's all the way up on Paul Loricella and Paul is now holding sixth place, so it looks like there are only six cars, soon to be only five on the lead lap. Loricella driving a Royale and on that car, the 41 machine, you see the bodywork ends just before uh, the roll bar and then the engine assembly. A little less aerodynamic perhaps, but his car 
handling well nonetheless. Good battle here. There's Robert Zanto and Allshafer battling for third place. Now Allshafer at the bottom of the screen, he's going to get in there on the inside of turn number three, and if he stays there, things are going to get close. They get very close there, and Zanto seems to hold the high line and the position. You know, this is his best ever run. He has not finished in the points in three earlier races. Back into the corner, that's Allshafer, side-mounted radiators on his newer design, Lola, and Hatala, the race leader, coming up to lap him. That's uh, an interesting situation here. Be Hatala basically handed over a race two races ago and is now fighting to get that uh, situation back. He lost a race by running out of gas and now it looks like he's driving like a man possessed out to prove that he should win. It's in Speedway in this novice club Formula Ford feature. Victor Hatala is trying to lap the field, and Nick Sirocco, from his early spin, has now moved up into second, past George Ulshafer, Paul Loricella, and Rick Brunner. On the left side of your screen, the race leader, Hatala, 37 years old, uh, driving that machine campaigned out of New York City. There's the runner-up, Nick Sirocco. He's closed right up behind Hatala, and within a lap or two, they should be running very close quarters and battling for the lead, especially if they have problems with this problem with lap traffic. And Hatala is working through the traffic, but again, these cars have very tiny mirrors. Sometimes it's tough to see. And Scirocco rockets on past the race leader. It looks like Hatala got caught between Greg Jazarin and Kim Boomauer, but remember, Scirocco seemed to have difficulty sliding the car, so it'll be interesting to see if he can hold that position now that he's in first. You saw Scirocco do a mirror check. The head looked like it was wagging back and forth. He was checking both mirrors, trying to find Hatala as he slices through race traffic. Sirocco, 28 years old, racing out of Englewood Cliffs, New Jersey, in a Crosley chassis machine. That's that not Crosley like the cars of the 40s, but Crosley, the Irish uh, race car manufacturer, and he is sliding the car. It's oversteering on him. It, it doesn't look like he got the handling just the way he'd like it to be. And that now these two cars are the only two cars on the lead lap. We saw them pass George Allshafer just before the last break, and now they seem to be pulling away from everyone. So Nick Sirocco, who certainly has the power, we saw that down the straightaway, and there is Hitala coming into view. He's only about four car lengths back, and now he's starting to work the rear end just a bit, sliding the car, running it loose off into the corner, trying to haul in Sirocco. I think he has the bit between his teeth. I think uh, that uh, he didn't really expect Sirocco to come up that quickly, and now he's uh, been caught a little bit by surprise and wants to get that position back. Nick Sirocco back straightaway, takes it off into turn number three. Hitala is there. He has closed right back up after seeing his lead disappear while working race traffic. Sirocco, the black and silver machine, taking away the entry line into the corner there. Then he runs down in a lower groove. Hatala drafting off him now down the back straight and looking to the inside in a bid for the lead. He's trying to go underneath, but it's very flat down there. I don't think he can hold the position. Sirocco on the outside has the advantage of the banking. It gets way high, gets a little bit loose, and Atala's in front again. You know, we saw Nick put two wheels over the yellow, yellow line there, and there's only about two feet, and there goes Nick underneath. He's going to take the position back, I think. Brilliant move down to the bottom of the racetrack, but the car bobbles. It wouldn't hold the line under acceleration. Got a little bit loose, and Atala's in front again. These drivers are having difficulty, as you can see. The cars are not holding the road as one might expect them to. That's part of being in this novice division. They still haven't developed the ability to know exactly what makes the car work here. Hatala sweeps high, going into the corner, trying to conserve the tires just a bit. You see Sirocco's car, when he gets down to the bottom, coming off the second corner, it seems to bind up just a bit. The, bra the back end breaks loose, and he's not able to retake the lead. Now they're in traffic. They're coming around uh, the lap car of Steve Ferner and between Kim Boomer, and here comes Scirocco down low. Well, I thought he'd used it up. He had really been sliding the back end, but in traffic again, he shows the mastery that Hatala does not seem to have. Now, Scirocco has really used up his rear tires. That back end is sliding all over the place, and Hatala's right back after him. Sirocco, though, slams the door as they get into turn number three, and now dirt tracks it off the fourth corner. Lapped car, Sirocco moves to the outside, handles it without difficulty. Seems in traffic that Sirocco is definitely having the man with the advantage here, whereas uh, Tala, here we have a spin, that's Kieran Curley, 
I don't know. The yellow flag's not coming out. There's only two laps to go. That's the two-lap to go signal, and they don't feel the car's in a dangerous position. Curly from Albany, New York, is not going to spoil this battle down to the wire between Hatala, who's led most of this race, and pole sitter Nick Scirocco, who has come back from a spin to retake the lead. If Scirocco's car will handle just twice more around this Thompson Speedway, he'll get the checker. Lap traffic again a factor. They lap past Ulschaefer. This should be a lap to go on the race leaders as they come past the front straightaway. Sirocco has used up the rear tires. They are just about gone. He slides the car off turn two. A look in the mirror as he whistles down the back stretch. Hatala is going to be close as they get off into turn number three. This will be the run off the final turn. Hatala is there, right on the tailpipes. Dives to the inside, but it's too little, too late. And Nick Sirocco, the 28-year-old foreman from New Jersey, takes the checkered flag in this Novice Club Ford feature event. John Sharan will make his way down to victory lane as the two combatants congratulate one another. Sirocco the winner. Hatala finishing second, George Olshafer third, a lap down, Robert Zano is fourth, and Paul Dos Santos finishes in the fifth position. Paul Loricella is credited with sixth, Rich Brunner is seventh, Frank Skodich eighth, Steve Ferner ninth, and Matt Corwin tenth. For Sirocco, it's his third victory of the season and moves him up to third in the points behind Olshafer and Parchek, who crashed out of the event early on. Let's go to victory lane. Here we are in victory lane from that thrilling novice club Ford race and with winner Nick Scirocco. Nick, you gave us all a lot of excitement with those slides out of turn four. Well, I hope you enjoyed it, but it was a little hairy and uh, I was under a little pressure by Victor here. I had a lot of fun, but next time I hope I have the car set a little bit better. When you spun early in the race, uh, a lot of us didn't think you'd be able to come back. Well, that was a little bit of an incentive for me. Uh, I saw Victor pull out a, a substantial lead and I thought I'd try a little harder, and sure enough, it worked out. Two races in a row now that you've won. Uh, you must think that the championship could be attainable. Well, possibly, depending on how everyone else finishes. Victor, you drove a great race, but again, you, you came up short of the brass ring. Two races ago, you run out of gas here. You just wind up getting beaten by uh, Nick. Tell us a little bit about it. Well, Nick's a great driver. Uh, I got a big lead on him. I think he had a little problem in one of the corners, and uh, frankly, I thought I had a big lead enough, so I wasn't paying attention, and he caught up to me, but I, I repassed him again, and uh, I just got to take my hat off to him. He's a great driver, and uh, his car wasn't handling well, and he still kept the lead. And John has some more information on the type of Formula Ford cars used in RCCA competition. It was produced by Tom Smith and directed by Roger Schwing, unit manager Robert Litz. The Race Car Club of America has more than 250 active drivers competing in three divisions on ovals and road race courses throughout Pennsylvania, New York, and New England. In a moment, we'll give you an address and phone number to show how you can get in on the fun of RCCA competition from behind the wheel or as a race worker. Today's event was a Syndicable Incorporated production in association with Motorsports Associates and the Race Car Club of America. Write to the RCCA at 166 Elm Street, New Rochelle, New York, 10805. Or for more information, call 914-576-RCCA.
That's not Victor, is it? I think we're Victor. Mm. Uh, I don't see